you there. I was just reading a copy of my favorite book, uh, Please Don't Shoot My Dog by Jackie Cooper. <laughs> uh, the reason I was reading it was because I'm trying to figure out a little bit more about logical intelligence and the brain. And I thought, you know, reading this favorite book, I would really tap into my mind set about uh, how I want to figure this out. It didn't really help. So first, I'm going to cut to uh, some footage of me interviewing some people, trying to figure out if they knew anything about this mathematical slash logical knowledge. That's about it. Good stuff, guys. Here at a local ping pong club, we have some ping pong players. Let's ask them what they think about brain research. Here we have a local ping pong player named Nick. Nick, how are you doing? I'm doing well. What do you think about logical slash mathematical intelligence? Do you know anything about that? Uh, logical intelligence in the brain? I don't know. Chickens? Oh, here's those boys from the ping pong club earlier. Sir, I didn't ask you. How do you feel about uh, mathematical slash logical intelligence? Is that, uh, is that anything you're aware of? I don't know, a country in Estonia? Okay, this is the part where I have to read some notes that I took and tell you all about this crazy stuff called logical slash mathematical intelligence. Thanks to a guy named PJ, the logical mathematical intelligence is most securely documented of the intelligences. This intelligence derives from the handling of objects, grows into the ability to think concretely about those objects, then develops into the ability to think formally of relationships without objects. One of the simplest applications of the logical mathematical intelligence is in the quantification of the observations. Counting. A person all... You know what? I can't do this. This is too boring. I gotta give you an example. You know, otherwise... What's the point, right? Well, let's get started. Okay, according to my notes, the most successful application of the logical mathematical intelligence Gardner suggests is a scientific method, which is can be regarded as uh, the practice of making careful measurements, uh, devising statements about the way in which the universe works, and then subjecting these statements to systematic confirmation. These three steps offer an interesting perspective on the stages in certain kind of writing. You make careful measurements by collecting information. You devise statements about how these facts go together in a thesis, outline, or method of approach. And then you confirm your hypothesis through a traditional research and revision and through writing the results in a convincing way. If you can't confirm your hypothesis, you shift to a different approach. To sum up the scientific approach, I'm going to give you a quote by Isaac Newton. At the height of his powers, there was in him a compelling desire to find order and design in what appeared to be chaos, to distill from a vast equivalent mass of materials a few basic principles that would embrace the whole and define the relationships of its component parts, in which whatever direction he turned, he was searching for a unifying structure. In conclusion, Exercises that challenge this intelligence could focus on precision, fact-checking, organization, focus, revision for structure, outlining, and writing in analytical modes, such as comparison or generalization from specific examples. In writing, we perhaps think, plan, organize, and perform large-scale revisions in structure through the use of the logical mathematical intelligence, but it should never be assumed that the logical mathematical intelligence is the intelligence that shapes or reflects all others. That is distinctly not the case. There are many cases, such as music, dance, and novels, that are driven from other sources. If you have any other questions, you should ask someone at your local library. They can probably point you in the right direction. <laughs>